Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome to another video by Ratchets and Wrenches and today we're gonna start working on our uh, Chevy Monte Carlo. We're gonna start with trying to fix all of our leaks, of which there are many. <laughs> At least three that I can, I, I, I know. We got a transmission oil leak, we got an engine oil leak, and also a coolant leak. But today we're gonna tackle our transmission leak, transmission uh, fluid leak. As you can see, it's a fairly substantial leak down there. That's from our transmission. It's from our uh, engine oil and also we got some coolant leak back there that we'll have to address uh, later but uh, as far as the transmission leak goes I'm pretty sure it's from the pan gasket I know I've already done a transmission oil pan uh, gasket removal and replacement but I thought I'll uh, get this on camera too and uh, put it out there just in case people are looking to do this on their uh, Chevy Monte Carlo so uh, so yeah just gonna dive underneath there and uh, double check everything make sure it is actually from our uh, transmission oil pan gasket okay Okay, and here's a look at our transmission oil pan. And as you can see, it's pretty pretty wet and grimy down here. In fact, it's grimy all over. And this the way this is designed is this transmission oil pan is actually right next to the engine oil pan. And we also have an oil leak on our engine oil pan. And as you can see, things are really <laughs> really uh, dirty down here there's a look at our engine oil pan you know whenever you get these oils on these bolts you get a look on a bunch of them it's pretty much starting to the oil is trying to leak from around the bolts and uh, we got them leaking from uh, both our engine and transmission oil pan so we're gonna go ahead and start removing uh, our transmission oil pan the thing is though on this transmission I cannot find the, the, uh, the drain bolt so it's gonna be probably pretty messy. We're gonna, we're gonna. What we're gonna have to do is uh, just start loosening these bolts. You know, I'm gonna loosen. I'm gonna try to loosen the bolts on this side a little bit more than on that side. And when we start to get a leak, I'll put a catch pan underneath this side so it starts leaking from uh, leaking out from this side. But and then that way we can get most of the oil out. And then eventually we're gonna have to remove all the bolts and take this out as with the, some of the transmission oil still in there and it's gonna be messy but uh, that's what we're gonna have to do to get this oil pan off okay okay so I got my catch pan underneath here I'm gonna start from these uh, front bolts and work our way back these are 10 millimeter and they're not held in with a lot of torque so very easy to remove Not gonna remove them completely yet, but just loosen them until until we start getting a leak. Just gonna lightly loosen the rear ones, okay? Cause I'm gonna stick a pry bar here after they're all loosened and pry this a little bit, so it's we get an opening here and hopefully all the tranny fluid will leak out here. So just gonna turn the rear ones just by one turn. There we go. Starting to get our leak. Now at this rate it would take about two weeks for all the tranny fluid to <laughs> leak out, so we're gonna keep going. Also if you have like one huge oil pan that can cover this whole area, that would be ideal. I got a couple of uh, um, drain pans I guess underneath here. So try to, because it's going to leak from all over the place, no matter how you do it, it's going to start leaking from back there, it's from the sides and all that stuff. So if you got one huge one that you can put underneath here to catch all the oil, that would be ideal, okay? Alright, I've been able to somewhat increase the, the rate of this leak, so and I think this is pretty good, I mean, but it's gonna probably take an, at least another a half an hour probably for this to add up, but it's still, it beats uh, getting all the floor all messy and dirty. So I'm just gonna go probably grab something to eat and come back in half an hour see how much it's leaked out, okay? Alright, so I was gone for way more than half an hour and we got about like seven quarts, six, seven quarts of transmission fluid that has uh, leaked out so I'm just gonna dump that and uh, come back and take off the 
take off these uh, start taking off the bolts completely and hopefully we'll be able to take that panel without making much of a mess okay all right so now we're gonna take off these bolts completely these front ones and work our way back alrighty You know what, actually, I'm going to keep one here just in case. I don't want this to come crashing down once we take off all the bolts, okay? Just wanted this to be somewhat of a controlled situation. <laughs> you know, now I'm just going to loosen these rear ones. I'm not going to remove them completely and keep prying on this because I think we can get more fluid to, to leak out like that, yeah. Good idea to have either a big pan or multiple pans underneath here because it's gonna be messy. All right, it's been a couple of minutes and it's loads the leak is slowed down, whereas we can now pretty much remove it. And this is pretty pretty empty. I mean, moving this around and nothing is, you know, not a whole lot of uh, fluid gushing out from here and there so we're just gonna move around move all these bolts around and just gonna leave the last two we will leave this one and one opposite of it in place then these last two will do one hand here that one and then that one and then that way we can just dump whatever fluid is still in this pan out without it hopefully getting all over our floor okay all right so we're now down to the last two so I'm gonna first take this one out Then this one at the back. And now, I'm gonna hopefully, be able to maneuver this yeah, into our catch pan. still fluid draining out of this uh, transmission filter so we're gonna let that sit for a couple minutes too until that's drained out before uh, removing this transmission filter okay now I think we should be able to just pop this transmission uh, filter out there we go that wasn't that wasn't too smooth but what are you gonna do Alrighty, so here's a look at our uh, transmission filter. Just took it out to compare it to the new one we got. Obviously pretty much the same except this one has this uh, cap seal that goes inside the transmission that this clicks into. This one obviously doesn't have it because it's still in on the transmission so we're gonna have to go ahead and remove that before we put this filter back on. And here's a look at our transmission oil pan. Here's a look at our, uh, our gasket. It's a one Pretty solid rigid piece and here's a look at our magnet and as you can see there it is quite a bit of buildup on this actually that's that's a lot I don't know I mean this is normal I think up to a limit but I mean this is a lot of it I don't know it might be normal for this transmission we will find out once we change this transmission for it and but you know generally speaking as long as you don't see many major you know chunks of metal you know that you can feel under your finger this is all like powder feels really powdery you know you can't really feel it under your finger it's just a thin layer uh, yeah I don't see any big chunks I don't feel it but uh, yeah like I said we're gonna find out once uh, <laughs> We put new transmission fluid and go for a test drive. You know, if the transmission starts acting up, then we might be in trouble. But uh, yeah, this transmission uh, filter came with that uh, that gasket, this rubber gasket that looks really, really cheap. But I went ahead and got a new gasket. Uh, paid 24 bucks for that one. It was 14 dollars for the the filter and that gasket. But I decided to pay extra just so. I wouldn't have to do this job again. <laughs> I'll pay $25 extra anytime just not to have to do this again. Um, so yeah, I recommend you do the same. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, 
clean this uh, this transmission oil pan thoroughly and uh, clean the, the mating surface on the transmission side and also take out that uh, that seal that's cap that's on there and uh, also another good thing is that uh, this transmission pan gasket doesn't require any RTB silicone so you gotta be good all right and you clean this basically the usual stuff just rags brake clean all that stuff and definitely want to clean the inside of it thoroughly but you also want to clean the outside of it and also underneath it just in case it starts leaking again again you want to know if it's leaking again or it's just a just the goo from the from the old leak all right all right here's the inside of it looks pretty clean to me just gonna flip it over and do the same on the back of it okay Okay, so we're at the other side of the transmission and this is the, the seal that's on the transmission filter that we need to remove. This is on there really tight so we're gonna see if we can use a screwdriver and a hammer at the end of it. I think this technique will work. There we go. There she is. Okay, and here's the new piece. You want to get some transmission fluid around it so it goes in easier. And as you can see, I just kind of, while I was taking the old one out, I kind of scratched the surface. That's fine. That's not a big deal as long as you don't scratch the inside of it because that's where the seal happens. Okay. So now we just push this in. You can also use the back of your screwdriver or whatever that fits over that. And start tapping it in. So let's seat it flat like that. It's perfect. Okay, and to clean the circumference of uh, the bottom of the transmission, basically the same thing. Brake cleaning rags and a lot of time and patience. <laughs> okay. Also try to clean up as uh, much as of the the old uh, oil and dirt around the the transmission too. So you know it looks somebody looks down there it doesn't look like it's still leaking you know because they don't know you replaced the transmission uh, pan gasket <laughs> okay okay next we're ready to press in our transmission filter make sure This is seated all the way. And it is. This will this end of it will be supported by the transmission pan, so you don't have to worry about supporting this end, but this side it needs to go all the way into that seal, okay? Okay, and a good thing about using these uh these oil pan gaskets that are pretty rigid is that you can just put it on the oil pan and line them up with the holes. Then get one of the screws ready. And and once you put this on the the transmission like this get one screw in you just want to put it in just a couple of threads you know you don't want to definitely don't want to put it all the way in okay and then you get your second screw and put it on this side and you can adjust these you can adjust this uh, this oil pan gasket on the transmission this way that's what's so neat about these oil pan gaskets and when you don't need to use any RTV you can just move it around and make your life a lot easier yeah so we're gonna so on these screws you want you want to screw them in you know, bunch of threads, but you want to stop before he actually hits the hits the metal, cause you want to you want to hand tighten him first, and you want to go from 
you want to hand tighten all of them first you want to put in all of them first make sure they go into the hole where they're supposed to and after you if there you put them in then you want to come back to the center and start torquing them down going from the center out so we're going to go from this one here here back here back here back here here and then we're going to go in that direction and work our way out so it goes this pan gasket is goes on there evenly when uh so we won't get any leaks okay but uh like i said first we're going to put all these screws in these, these little bolts in and make sure they go through the hole through both the, the pan and the gasket okay okay now it's time to tighten these down what i like to do is to do is uh, make two passes i want to hand tighten them by hand first going the crisscross pattern from center out then I want to then I'll torque him with the torque wrench and uh, the torque spec for these if you're wondering is about uh, um, 8 foot pounds or 96 inch pounds okay Hey, I got a bolt missing. <laughs> yeah, I wanna. You don't wanna be missing a bolt. You'll get a leak out of here in a heartbeat. Okay, now it's time to torque him down. Same pattern. You might wanna keep track of all the how many you've torqued down so you don't miss any. Okay. Alrighty, that's all there is to it. Now we're just going to add some transmission fluid, okay? Okay, and the place you add transmission fluid to this uh, transmission is through the dipstick, which is back here. So we just remove the dipstick, and I'm going to put our funnel there, and then we're going to add transmission fluid. Okay, and the way you want to add transmission fluid is basically, well, you want to make sure you get the right transmission fluid. Very important, you get the right kind. You can also always just check with the dealer or check with your... Uh, reputable <laughs> local automotive parts store uh, you know the dipstick for this it says to use Dextron 3 but I ch I've, I've uh, called the dealer also talked to the, the local parts store and they said that they've switched that to Dextron 6 so that's what we're going to use and they will also they can also give you provide you with any with uh, capacity information you know for any service change for this uh, transmission it's you'll you'll need seven and a half quarts okay you can also always just measure how much transmission fluid you take out and go from there. Uh, especially since these are like eight bucks, eight or nine bucks a quart. All right, and uh, what I like to do is actually like, let's say this thing is gonna need seven and a half quarts. I'll put in, let's say uh, four and a half, five quarts. Then turn on the car and uh, you know, while it's idle, while at a stop, just start putting the transmission in different gears, you know, go from park to reverse. To, uh, to neutral, drive, you know, shift down, waiting about 10 to 15 seconds in each gear, and then you go back up, and then you come up, check the transmission level, start adding a little bit, but you wanna keep in mind, the you need to, the, your final reading needs to be at a car and at to operating temperature. That's when you get your most accurate reading. So you wanna, you know, take your time, add a little bit at a time until, uh, you know you get the right level and then you should be good to go okay and uh, also while the car is on, on, the, on jack stands while you after you add the transmission fluid you just go underneath and take a look make sure you got no leaks if you do have leaks around the transmission oil pan you can always try t tightening the bolts a little bit just a little bit at a time until your leak stops okay so yeah hope this video helps you out there if you have any comments or suggestions, comments or suggestions please leave them below and if you like the video please give it a thumbs up and i'll see you next time thanks for watching